sense that drop. <laughs> how, so how are we going to introduce this? Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck, that was lame. Oh god. I, I, I've already unsubscribed. <laughs> well, yeah. Who are we? Okay, well, uh, if we were to introduce ourselves, it will be like... I don't know. That, that was it. That was, that was what just a What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> Welcome, motherfuckers, to uh, the Ranting Bananas. That's it. It's Chris and Jessica. Hi. Hey. <laughs> what up, motherfuckers? There, there's already so many like dolphin sounds. <laughs> and, okay. it, and it hasn't even been like 10 minutes. It's so. natural. <laughs> I, I swear it's all natural. This is the Ranting Bananas. We are just two bananas talking shits. <laughs> Because we can, and because we want to, things we might talk about in terms of shit. Actually, why don't we introduce ourselves first? Like, I would love to know more about you, Jessica. Uh, who the fuck are you? What do you do? And why are you uh, slightly relevant? Slightly relevant. <laughs> wow. We're not all that relevant, right? Wow. How many know. followers do you have on Instagram? Let's. I'm, I'm gonna like flex that. I have eight. Really? I bet you. I have nine. <laughs> I've got nine. Like my mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandpa. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess we can start introducing ourselves. So uh, I yeah. am Jess. Uh, I am half Thai, half Swiss. I am, of course, 15 years old. This is what my birth certificate <laughs> says. If it, if you see that it says like I'm 26 years old, that's totally uh, untrue. I'm 15. I have my whole life in front of me. <laughs> bright future, bright future. Yeah. Um, hmm. It's so difficult to say. Like, you know, the question that I hate the most when I go to interview is like, who are you? And I'm like, dude, I am so nuanced. There's like so many uh, yeah, yeah, things yeah, yeah, about yeah. me. Like, where do I start? Yeah, one I word. One word. Describe yourself in one word. Fuck one you. word. Yeah. No, 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 like banana. <laughs> Banana, yeah. Yeah, so like, that's why we picked up the name banana. I mean, except the fact that, you know, it's like a super racist <laughs> fruit. Because we are white on the inside and yellow on the outside. Yeah, <laughs> damn right, motherfuckers. <laughs> that's what we are, yeah. So Jess, alright, I'll, I'll, I'll be this arsehole interviewer with cliche questions. Uh, so what, what What is your weakness? Oh, I... <laughs> I love my job too much. I work too I, I, hard. I, I always come to work on time. And it's like I'm, I'm I such, care such too much. <laughs> yeah, I, I put the work over family and friends. Uh, yeah, I, I look too much over the details. <laughs> right. Okay, so Jess, what the hell are you doing in Bangkok? You're half Swiss, half Thai, and you're living in Asia. Like, how does that happen? Well... <laughs> It's a funny story because, so I, I was a bartender, uh, I was a bartender for like two, three years when I was back in Switzerland, and my mom one day just came to me and she said, you're too smart to be a bartender. And I'm like, well, mom, if I was, if I am a bartender, so clearly I'm not that smart as you think I am. Bartenders are smart. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had to be smart because, you know, I had to think about, like, okay, who will I serve today? Like, that guy Basic has a nice mathematics. on his wrist, so uh, I'm going to be like... There you go. Yeah, that's that, that, that's yeah. the motherfucker that tips. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, she said, you're way too smart to be a bartender for the rest of your life. And I said, bullshit, I want to be a bartender for the rest of my life. I want to open a bar and become, like, you know the talk of the town and then she said no I'm like okay you win so we compromised and I said well if I have to study then why not go somewhere that is you know warm cheap and super easy to study because uh, I mean I'm half Thai so I know about Thai culture and I know that school here it's so fucking easy I that's the <laughs> only reason don't <laughs> lie man the only reason you're like oh fucking chilled asia is chilled that's why i'm here yeah that's true it was like you know i'm just gonna chill like, i don't want i didn't want to study i don't believe in traditional way of studying as in you know people who get good grades usually are not the people who will be successful later in life so i'm like why do i have to go to university spend money and then you know i get a certificate and then maybe i'm not even smarter than before but i mean in the end everything turned out well because I'm like, yay, now I have a job in Thailand, I'm happy. Uh, I find um, work 
I'm working in gaming at the moment, which is, you know, it's a dream job. When I was 15 years old in Switzerland, no one told me, I, you can have a job in gaming. Mm. And I was like, my only options in life are... Work on cheese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in a cheese factory. Be a bartender or make cheese. <laughs> Those are my options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or be like uh, the receptionist at the, like, the bank. Because oh, Swiss whoa. banks uh, Dude, so the shit, huh? <laughs> my dad works in a bank, and I was like, Mafia! Dude, like, find me a job in banking. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I'm here in Thailand. Where and how long have you been here? I've been here uh, five years now. Shit, so you're basically full yellow. Am I full yellow? Are you, are you like, nah. like, the shade of yellow has I, increased I over time? I now, inside, I'm way more white than before. What? <laughs> Tyler made you more white? Yeah, I think Tyler made me more white. That's weird. But I, I, I get it. I, it's, it's this, like, world of, like, it's quite Eastern, but you can stick to, like, very Western things. Because, you know, Thailand is one of the most developed countries in Southeast Asia. And there's all these, like, conveniences, right, that... That we enjoy, and it's quite Western anyway, like, but maybe that's just the surface, but when you scratch it, there's all this, like, Thai stuff that comes out. Hmm. I would like, say mostly massage because, oil. Like, I don't relate at all to Thai people. <laughs> I mean, I do relate to them in some aspects, like, I mean, my mom is Thai, so when I grew up, you know, I picked up some of, some of the Thai culture trait. but the more time I spend with Thai people, the more I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> but, okay, this is interesting, right, so... How did you feel when you were growing up in uh, Switzerland? Was it like, you know, I don't look exactly like you, mm. but, like, do you did you feel a part of, like, the Swiss friends you had, or w at least the white ones, or whatever, like? No, that's the thing. When I was in Switzerland, I was like, I'm fucking Asian. <laughs> I'm, I'm so Asian, because, you know, uh, my mom makes me lunch and eats rice and pork cutlet. <laughs> okay, that sounds I, bomb, <laughs> dude. Like, what? I mean... As a kid, I'm like, oh, look, like, my lunch is different from everyone else. Everyone else is, like, you know, having sandwiches and whatever. I'm like, rice and, you know, chopsticks. <laughs> and as a snack... Foldable chopsticks. Yes, yeah. mom. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, you know, I talked... Uh, I was different from all of my friends. I was... I even got bullied because I was, look, you know, I looked Asian. And all of the kids would come to me and be like, oh, uh, ching chung ching chang. What did I say in Thai? And I'm like... Uh, nothing, you're just like gibberish yeah. and you sound like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, uh, they paint you with the same brush, right? Like, oh, you're yellow, so therefore you must be from China, because that's the only place we've heard. Oh my God, yeah. Potentially Japan, but yeah. like, Japan wasn't cool back then, right? Now it's like super cool. Yeah, back yeah, then yeah, it was yeah. like, whatever, right? It's only Chinese, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that if I was a kid now, my life would be so much easier. But as a kid there, you know, I was just surrounded by white people, and I'm like, yeah, I don't relate to you. I mean, we have the same culture, I sp we speak the same language, but everything, like, everything is so different. But you, you actually speak Italian, right? Yeah, I do. So you speak Italian, English, and Thai. Yeah. Anything else? What's the national language of Switzerland? I don't fucking know this. So that's the thing, we have four official languages. We oh my god, you greedy bastards. <laughs> greedy bastards, you know? I think that's why I have a talent for languages, dude. Yeah, I, what I, I can whatever. pick up language. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> you, how many languages do you speak? One? Uh, yeah, half, barely. Half barely two. In good English and bad English. <laughs> Ooh, <okay. laughs> uh, okay, so you speak Italian. So you you uh, you grew up in the Italian part of Switzerland, mm -hmm. which is like super close to the border, I'm guessing. Yeah. In one of the border towns. Okay, so everybody there just speaks Italian, or is it like very mixed in terms of language as well? Mm, no, every. Pretty much everybody speaks Italian there. I mean, it's very separated the way Switzerland is structured. So where I live, it's basically just the Italian region. If you go north, it's going to like start already the German part. And then if you go to west, then it's the French part. Do you guys have the little subcultures in Switzerland? Like, the German part are more like German people, you oh, know, yeah, the French part 100%. is more... So, like, you have the whole, like, coffee culture, pasta, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, I don't, like, I'm just really stereotyping Italians, but no, I don't no, really no, know no, what's no, up. That's super true, because the thing is that Swiss people, we don't, I don't know, we don't feel united, except when the Swiss football team is playing. 
Or Federer is playing. If Federer Which is playing, is everyone never. is Swiss. <laughs> I mean, the football team. Federer is awesome, yeah. Yeah, so like at that time, it's like, yes, we are Swiss people. But any other time, it's just like, I am Swiss Italian. Like, no, I, I'm not like Swiss German or whatever. So we call Swiss Germans like courgettes, basically. Courgettes, nice. Yeah, I was like, hey, these courgettes, they always come in the summer and then pr- like they force us to speak courgette to them <laughs> to speak German. What what do they call like Chinese people as as like racism? Like in in like like as a racist term, sorry. In like Spain is like uh, Chino, right? But that's Chinese. I don't know if it's derogatory or not. But mm. what are like Italian or what's the Italian word for someone that's yellow? Like is it like in England we say chinky. Chinky. Yeah, uh, oh. a ching chong is a standard one, but it you know, but huh. chinky or chink is like the derogatory term. What's what's yours? I guess call it like yellow face. Oh. But, uh, do you have a term in English to say like the face of an animal? Shit, I don't know this, but I would love to learn <laughs> whatever. So we call it like muso giallo. Okay. And muso is like it's basically face, but only for animals. So if it's a hum- if it's a human face, it's faccia. But okay. if it's the face of like a dog, then you say like muso. So it's really to call it like animal face yellow. <laughs> animal face yellow. Oh, that, yellow that hurts face. deep, <laughs> deep into my ancestors. Yeah. That hurt. We okay. Are, and we also have, but the thing is that, um, do you have like, uh, uh, how do you call it, like radars? So on the highway, sometimes you have the machines that track your speed, yes. like the, the car speed. And uh, basically it flashes a light and take a picture of you. Yeah, speed cameras. That one. <laughs> we call it radar. Radar, okay. So we call those machines like, uh, like Japanese tourists. Because they're always taking pictures. Oh uh, yeah. So when yeah. when you see like one of those on the street, you're like, you know, you call your friends and be like, yeah, be careful of the tourists or the Japanese tourists on this like highway. Oh, so you like <laughs> racist motherfuckers! Yeah, actually, the ones in England are they're either grey, but majority of them are yellow. Mm. So it's a yellow thing flashing you. So that in that sense, that uh, kind of works. Uh, okay, cool. cool. All right. Cool. Um, what about you, though? So wait, wait, wait. What? That, no, no. Is okay. It, okay. Is it okay? One last question, then. One last question. Yeah. What's a racist term for a white person in Thailand? Farang. Farang. I mean, it's nah, not. It's really. like just foreigner, right? It's not a racist term. Farang kino. Kino. What does that mean? Kino is like bird poop. <laughs> Oh, you so guys are no. dirty! Like it's like yellow face, animal yellow face, kind of vague, right? You guys are like actual pigeon shit. That's deep, man. Okay. I don't know why, to be honest. I just know the term exists, but as far as the etymology, I like, I, I, I don't, I don't know who came up with it or why. But Farang means like foreigner. It doesn't necessarily mean white dude, does mm, it? I mean, I've been reading about it, and they're like, it's because it's similar to the word Faranset. Faranset it means like French person. Oh, okay. So I'm guessing the first like foreigners that came to Thailand were mostly French. So you know, mm. the term adapted, adapted like oh, white people. Okay. So, okay. I guess that I don't know if it's true, but this is what I heard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I thought foreign was like a a sweeping statement. Like you are foreign, so therefore there's this word that uh yeah that paints everybody in the same brush as well, right? Yeah, right. Whatever color you are, like yeah. it's just you're not Thai. So, but they probably got other ones for like Chinese or Japanese or whatever, right? I guess they just call it like Chinese or Japanese people. But yeah, foreign is mostly for white people. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right. So let me tell you about myself. So where do I start? Okay. So I'm. Half Vietnamese, half Chinese. Mm-hmm. Born and bred in the UK, in London. <laughs> that's that's where I was born. <laughs> Actually, not where I call home. I call home in a place called Surrey, and uh, Surrey, like Harry Potter. Uh, yes, actually. <laughs> so, the funny thing is, uh, I went to school with a guy in Harry Potter, oh. but his house, the first one, his house, like the mm. cupboard under the stairs, was filmed in my cousin's town, Wokenham. And it, like, it looked like his houses when I used to visit him when I was smaller. But anyway, that's a different story. So yeah, <laughs> I moved to Asia, uh, specifically Ho Chi Minh City and Vietnam uh, in 2013. 
I was like traveling, doing all this shit, like just like basically saving up uh, money to go traveling because I couldn't find a job after uni, you know, not a job that I liked anyway. And uh, so I was doing a bunch of part time work. Then when I got to Vietnam, my parents had already t- retired a few years before, and yeah, I was like, okay, well, Vietnam is the home base. Kind of did the sort of Southeast Asia thing that people do after university or even before when they take a gap year and yeah just kind of ran out of money four months into my <laughs> six months trip and my parents were like well you should probably find a job or like you know to like survive in these two months you have left and I was like yeah cool found a really cool job everything just kind of worked out for the best right uh, so I've been in Asia for about six years now oh well no I've been in Asia for five in Mexico for one but Asia is where I call home or Bangkok specifically mm-hmm. yeah man. I mean uh, what is this thing with you know parents and expectation of us finding a good job <laughs> how dare they <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually my parents were chill they, they've always been chill like mm. I remember my parents wanted to retire like you know what in like 2010 2009 but me being a fuck up right uh i went to uni for like computing uh dropped out after a year because basically we just smoked weed every day and didn't do anything and then i was like yeah and then i was like oh i'm in so much debt (laughs) fuck i can't ask my parents for help so and then they were like you know what we're just gonna retire like we're not gonna wait for you but they were like you know you kids what the fuck are you doing right so they just went but not like that but you know like yeah, of course they have expectations, but you know, Asian parents, right? Like, mm. but mine were like super chill. However, with Asian parents, they always compare. Right? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Oh, I hated that. So every time, maybe I would get like a bad uh, grade or something. She would be like, ah, oh, but then you know, the others are doing better. Blah blah blah. And then if I say something like, oh, but everyone in the class did bad, and then she will say, you don't have to compare yourself to others. <laughs> like. <laughs> What? Yeah, you, 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 crazy. Oh, yeah, that I always hated. It. Did you ever have like cousins or like Asian, you know, families that are close to your family? So you're like kind of hypothetically cousins mm. uh, that were like doctors or lawyers or like they were like uber successful, you know, growing up, you know, and like you know, smashing exams. Did you ever get compared to those kind of people? Thank God, no. <laughs> okay, All dude. Right. I, I don't know how my life would turn out if that would be the case. I'm lucky because I am basically the first, I, yeah, I think I'm the first in my family to finish university and have a bachelor degree and everything. Boom. That's why it was so important to your mum, right? Yeah. yeah. There you go, She's like, in hindsight. You are smart. You have to go to university. You yeah. have to do something with your life. I'm like, mom, I don't want to. Yeah, it's probably because <laughs> she be never leader. had like the opportunity, right? Or university here was so expensive back in the day i don't know i don't know what it is i mean she did have the opportunity uh they they started going to university her and her sisters but uh they they are not the student type so i think they never finished in the end i mean my mom i have no idea why my mom stopped going to university i know that my aunt she's like a troublemaker (laughs) <laughs> oh she, yeah she's Tell such a kind troublemaker of trouble. that so my thai grandpa so here in thailand he's a cop like he used to be a cop corrupt and motherfucker dude <laughs> that's the only reason why my mom and my aunt got into a good high school oh there you so go <laughs> he basically went uh there and he's like well now you get my daughters into school because you know i'm fucking police here <laughs> yeah yeah or i'll beat your ass down <laughs> yeah and the funny thing is that i found out this like one year ago so no one told me about it and i'm like so i had to work my ass off and then you gave me shit to go mm. to like to a school and then i found out that you didn't even finish university and you didn't get in a good high school because of your merits <laughs> you got in because of grandpa <laughs> How dare you? It's weird here, though, but I, I think there's still some of that stuff going on. I think it happens everywhere in the world, but e- like you can see it in Asia way more, right? Mm. Where it's like relationship matters, and like if you got the connects, you can pretty much rule the world oh, over yeah, here. Yeah, one hundred percent. That that's the Asian system. I yeah, guess. exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not really based on meritocracy. You might think it is. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. It's yeah. It's it's money. It's corruption. It's power. And it's all that crazy shit. Okay, so first one to get a degree in your family and was your mom like super proud of you after that or like what's up oh 
yeah, I guess she was happy. I mean, she pushed me to go to university, so if she's not happy, I'm gonna be angry at her. Right? <laughs> I'm wasting yeah. my time. Yeah. yeah. But no, I guess I guess they were happy. I mean, they're always happy when something good happens to me, right? That they were not uber excited, but they were like, oh, they bragged a lot. That's cool. Yeah, I, l- I love it. It's like bragging, like, eh. So apparently, um, my mom. It's because we have, you know, some difficulty. Uh, sp- we have some miscommunication sometimes, and because I am basically yeah a white person, but she's still so Thai. So I have a lot of these culture barriers, even with my home. I I yeah. grew up with that. Yeah. Um, and she still doesn't get what what am I doing in life. And every time she's like, oh, yeah, Jessica is doing like some video game thing. <laughs> and every time people like come to me and like, oh, so you're drawing for video games. Like, no. Yeah. I, I am like part of a marketing department for like a VC. Right. I am, you know, in the financial part of gaming. I'm not making the games. But of course, my mom cannot explain that because I can't explain that to my mom. And also, she, you know, it's such a new job. She's super old school. Yeah, so she doesn't right. get these kind of positions. And one time she got... Oh, I, I was so upset. She called me saying, you know, why are you not thinking about changing your career and doing something else with your life? Like, mom, do, do you think that I'm like playing video games the whole day? <laughs> and she's like, you know, you could do something better. You can find something more serious. What about banking? Like, mom. Yeah, the, the funny thing is like, Everybody wants to play video games for a living now, like because you can do it. Yeah. And like, the, there's these like fucking rich people like, uh, uh, what's that? What's that dude's name? Like the most famous YouTuber, like, uh, PewDiePie. PewDiePie, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, like he played video games for a living for so long, and now he's like, you know, he's just amazing, right? He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. Exactly. Like what? <laughs> yeah, she's just old school. Yeah. She just, I mean, I get it. She just wants her daughter to be, you know, happy and rich and I, I, take care of I think it's different, right? She obviously wants that for you. Every mother does. But whatever you do, I feel like uh, your parent, like, the, the really good things that you do in life are basically like bragging ammo for your Asian parents. <laughs> so it's like how much money you make, like oh God, your so girlfriend, true. boyfriend, like whatever it is, it's like... How can they arm their fucking arsenal so Dude. when they chat to friends they can just like fucking brag? Dude, that's so true. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean it happens, right? It's like, yeah, because everyone like you know they love comparing. Because so yeah, back to the question that I asked you earlier, it's because we grew up in like a quite a, a big community of these like Vietnamese refugees mm. um, and like yeah some of them some of their daughters and and sons were really successful right like mm-hmm. investment or like uh, a couple of them are doctors a couple of like you know lawyers I'm not sure if they're good at their job or whatever but like that's like the first thing mm. right and growing up it's like yeah, yeah. why aren't you like this person why? and then like my sister was like like, she is a fashion designer. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom was like, oh, you'll never make money out of fashion. <laughs> and it's like, why can't you be like this person? A uh, doctor. And we were like, what the fuck? So we were like doomed to fail anyway. Like, yeah. in her eyes, yeah. right? Uh, which is quite funny. But now she's happy. Now she brags about us. Uh, <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After 30 years. Wow. Uh, so it's good. Yeah. So I think you just work up to that, right? Like, they... Yeah, you just gotta give them some bragging rights. Like, report good news and not the bad, maybe. Did you have this stereotype in the UK that the Asian person is always the smartest one in the class? I don't know, dude. I didn't grow around, like, we had family and friends, but we lived in a different town. I don't know if I ever have that, but I do know about that stereotype. I think it's very American as well, Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. I feel like, well, I'm guessing because... Uh, more Asian countries try to go to America, you know, the the country of freedom, so that stereotype is bigger in Asia, but, uh, in America, sorry, uh, but, I mean, in Switzerland, I was the only Asian kid, so... <laughs> the only Asian kid, it's, uh, yeah, alright, uh, mate, actually, <laughs> don't, don't try and be the only banana in Switzerland, come on. Uh, for a long time, I was, and then these two Chinese girls got adopted, like, five to six years like after I started school uh, but they were 100% Chinese so but their parents were white because they got adopted right 
Oh, where people would go to China. Yeah, that was a huge thing in the UK as well. Yeah. People just come come around yeah, like, oh, I've got Chinese babies. babies. Yeah, because <laughs> we had a restaurant. There's just like random white guys like, oh, look at my Chinese kids. And we're like, <laughs> where the fuck did you get that? <laughs> like, this is kind of like, what? <laughs> like, Where okay, dude. <laughs> I mean, they must have a fucking identity crisis when they grow up, right? Yeah, I mean, imagine you look different from your parents, and everyone around you looks different. You're supposed to have some like different culture, but no, you you don't relate to that because you didn't grow up with that. Yeah, and maybe you like you maybe remember something from your biological parents, like you leaving yeah. China. If you, it depends how young you are, right? But yeah, that would fuck yeah. you up, man. So there is um, how do you call it? like a charity um, that's in Switzerland. And basically, they help uh, Swiss people to adopt Thai children. So a lot of wow. these, you know, Thai children, basically, they're adopted by a Swiss family. But a lot, like, they do a lot of events where they try to teach to these Thai kids a little bit of, you know, um, both how to integrate in the Swiss society, but also try to retain their, you know, Thai identity. Because right. some kids, uh, they're adopted a li- when they're a little bit older, like 7 to 12 years old. Um, but some, like, get adopted as babies, so they're trying to, like, teach them, you know, this is still part of you, and we're trying to retain that, so parents are trying to make them feel like, you know, they belong to both. Culture. Right, I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. great charity. Yeah. But like, what's the thing about adopting Thai kids? Why is that? Why is there just so many Thai kids that want to be adopted in the first place? Hmm, that's interesting. I never thought about why. Why would I adopt? Well, I would adopt a Thai kid because it's part of my culture, right? Sure. So if but I that had you to have adopt, a thing, right? Like, yeah. But why would white people adopt <laughs> Asian yeah. kids? Yeah. Yeah. Is there like a surplus of Thai kids that are unwanted? Because in China, that's what happened, right? Mm-hmm. They had this one-child rule, so everybody wanted a male heir. You can carry yeah, on the family name, yeah, all this yeah, bullshit, yeah, yeah. right? And then all you, like, right now, it's like, oh, you have to pay taxes for it. Mm-hmm. Like, if you have more than one kid or whatever, right? Yeah. So if you're rich, you can afford it. But back in the day, there was a lot of little girls getting orphaned because mm-hmm. the parents didn't really want yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so I get that from a China perspective. But hmm. I don't know why. Also, it happens in Korea, apparently. Oh, really? Like, yeah, lots of, like, Korean-Americans have, uh, you know, adopted by white parents. But but Korea, I think it's also part of the war thing. Mm. Right? Uh, so lots of orphanages there and, like, you know, Americans were there. But I don't get it, like, for Thai kids specifically. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, I have a friend, she's Indian, but she got adopted by like, a Swiss couple, and they're super white. Like, why did they go to India to get this girl? Actually, that's an interesting question. We, we have to invite a white parent who adopted an Asian kid and yeah. be like, why Asian? Yeah, like... <laughs> why not another white? Yeah, I, I, I would have thought it was a bit hard. I, I read something ages ago, so I don't really remember the details, so don't fact check me. Uh, but it was like some whole crazy business of adoption. How much money there is in these like agencies getting a kid from like abroad or anywhere and making a huge cut uh, of of the adoption money, right? Like, mm. um, yeah, it's crazy. I think it, it's also prevalent in America where it's like not only, you know, they kind of brand themselves as like, uh, you know, a, a good company, but really they just make shit loads of money and mm. they get these kids from who, God knows where, right? Mm-hmm. Um, also, adopting has become super hard because I think of these has things. It? Yeah, because like, uh, I remember the couple that I said that walked into our restaurant that was like, oh, I found these two Chinese babies. But like, no, the process was actually really long and I could imagine it being super crazy now that the parents have to go through like this whole assessment, mm. not just financially, but probably like psychologically like are you fucked up or anything but it's getting so much harder now to Hmm. get a kid but maybe from even abroad i think Hmm. i guess it will make sense uh if it costs a lot of money to adopt like a local child and then you can just you know buy a ticket and get one for cheaper (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be super sad, though. It's like outsourcing, right? It's kind of like, oh, that person having a baby over there. Yeah, that let me just get that. That child less. I'm gonna get that one. Yeah, yeah, and then like they lie to themselves, like, no, we're we're helping, we're helping. <laughs> we're helping. But you're funding some crazy, 
business in the background. That's Maybe it's because those. of like you know uh, Angelina, Brad Pitt. I think they adopted a bunch of Thai kids. Cambodian as well. Uh, Cambodian, yeah, Cambodian. I'm yeah. not sure. Maybe did they? Maybe they even have a Vietnamese kid. You know, they're very popular. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we are prettier. Come on. I mean... The Vietnamese? No, in, like, in oh. general. Because like, <laughs> I was about to like throw punches. <laughs> no, if I, if I have to adopt a kid, I would adopt an Asian kid. Because there's mm. more chances that, you know, when they grow up, they're going to be pretty. and uh, They're going to be super they smart. Old, no. Yeah, they're going to be, gonna be doctors. Smart, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're gonna, engineers, yeah, lawyers. Yeah, they're going to be like the best gamers and have the biggest YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, well, uh, let's tell people the meaning of bananas i think we already spoke about it right where the derogatory term of being a banana is you're yellow on the outside we, you look yellow but on the inside you're white so yeah. we very much feel like that uh, <laughs> me and jessica so um but jessica also brought up this other point about <laughs> the meaning of bananas and uh, maybe you can tell us more about that i mean if you think about it the banana <laughs> As is the fruit with the best user experience. Why? So, point number one. Go. A banana is easy to carry around. So, you know, you don't have to get a wrap, you don't have to get a bag, you just like put it somewhere in your pocket and then you can eat it anywhere. Super easy to eat, like point number two. <laughs> Super easy to eat, uh, it's not messy, you literally just peel it and then you start biting it. And that's it. Like clean, uh, not like an orange where you like start peeling and then everything is sticky, or like an apple, which in the end you're like, you know, you're trying to eat this thing and try to look normal, and then your hands get super sticky again. And then, point number three, it's healthy. Mm-hmm. I mean, with all the potassium and vitamin uh, A, B, C, D, F, G, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Really scientific there. <laughs> yeah. She was born to be a doctor, guys. Come on. Nutritionist right I here. I said the word potassium, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the pee bomb! <laughs> and you know what's the potassium? I th- okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> she just... I don't know what just happened there. I think it was Italian, Swiss. I don't know what the fuck happened. I wasn't sure. Like, should I say it? Like, I, I, I don't remember if it's the correct one. So, no. <laughs> Let's ignore that. Wait, there's another point as well. It's like... Uh, it it basically tells you when it's ready to eat, right? Uh, yeah, so looking at the skin, you can tell this one it's ripe, this one is like past the expiration date, and literally the banana is the best user experience you can get. Yeah, visual feedback, guys. Yeah. The affordance of when it is ready to eat. Yeah, and why do you why do you even care about user experience, and how does that relate? Because <laughs> you're a product designer. <laughs> what the fuck? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mind blowing. Yeah. I want to add some like can we add some like explosions? Let's sounds? add <laughs> yeah, copious of explosions. Now what you motherfuckers don't know about me and Jessica is that we are, you know, in the field of tech, she's in gaming, uh, uh and I'm in you know, I'm a designer in fintech uh, and we work in a startup environment. So of of course we care about good user experience and product design and all them healthy things there, I guess. Like <laughs> a banana. <laughs> banana. Yeah. Banana. So we started this podcast really just to talk shit, right? Like uh, about things that we care about. We might touch on subjects, for example, like gaming or or expats living in Bangkok, being fucking Asians, fake Asians. <laughs> maybe some star stuff. Third culture kids. Yeah, third culture kids, bitches, and just all that st- stuff. I mean, we ramble a lot, so. Let's carry on. Yeah, okay, so tell me a bit about your job. What's going on? What What the hell do you do? I touched on gaming. You, you said something about VC, but what is it actually? So what we do is we accelerate game studios. Uh, every year we pick 10 studios from around the world. We pick uh, Basically, we pick 10 of their games, uh, regardless of genre, platform. So it's really... Like we have horror games on PC, we have co-op adventure games on Switch, we have uh, strategy games on mobile, and what we do, we yeah, we accelerate them. So we invest uh, an initial amount, like 40k uh, USD, and then we just you know we tell them you make great games. 
but you have no fucking idea how to do your marketing mm. and this is where i come in because i'm like the marketing manager um but right now uh, i am also transitioning more in the product part because we are making a product um like a platform so this is what i'm doing in cool my company. very cool very cool and what's your what's your favorite game of 2019 do you have a favorite game oh yes not, not in your company, of course. Not the ones you invested in. Or it could be, but could just... Could be anything? It, yeah, it could be anything, yeah. Oh, that's hard. You made it harder. 2019. Or like, or favorite game of all time? I don't know. Just tell me some games that you love. Favorite game of all time. It's even harder, man. There's like so many games. I would say in the last couple of years, my favorite has to be Zelda Breath of the Wild on the Switch. It's like, it's graphics on point, gameplay on point <laughs> <laughs> character and the story super on point so yeah i would say that i mean it's the kind of game that oh i love this so in summary breath of the wild it's if you can think it you can do it mm, okay so, yeah, it's literally so open world like you can finish i mean there is a little bit of a tutorial in the beginning um but even the tutorial it's not something where they tell you you have to go here you have to go there they only have maybe five objectives so you have to go to four shrines uh solve the puzzle in the shrine uh you have to get the um huh, the like kite i would yep. say so you can you know bug the glider so you can fly around and that's it and after that it's literally you can do whatever you want you can go and try to get uh help to defeat ganon ganon basically took over for 100 year and now you know you have to save uh zelda and as link you wake up after 100 year like uh oh, god damn it now i have to save the world again <laughs> Great. Because I failed 100 years ago, and then they put me to sleep. Because they're like, ah, yeah, you were not that good. So Wait, what was the last? Years. What was the last Zelda game before that? Do you remember it? Because I played Ocarina of Time, but that was like uh, Ocarina of Time was like 2014, 15. No, like, is that the first one on N64? So I played the first one on N64. Actually, my dad played it, and then I just watched, and then I played it as well. Huh. I'm not sure. I mean, there's so many Zelda games, to be honest. Mm. There are, aren't there? Like, yeah. now there's a new one that everyone's raving about. You know, yeah, like, the, like... Breath of the Wild. No, 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 no. There's one... No, Link's something. Oh, Link's Awakening. Yeah, Link's that one, everyone's, yeah, like, the cute yeah, one. Yeah. But yeah. Breath of the Wild's the good one yeah. on the Switch. And then there's yeah. another cute one, which is, like... Yeah, yeah Link's Awakening. Yeah, whatever. I haven't tried it. Apparently, okay. it's... I mean, it's just a remake. Uh, oh, is it? So, it's... Almost the same, I guess it's the same story, same mechanics, um, just okay. bumped up graphics. Ooh, okay, I mean, cool. So Zelda right. Breath of the Wild. Actually, the other day, I nearly had a spontaneous <laughs> buying decision because my PS4 wasn't here, so I was like, fuck, I need to, I need to play games. <laughs> I, I should play. I get the Switch? Should I, I need, get the Switch? I yeah. <laughs> but I, I luckily didn't, you know, uh, fall victim to my spontaneous. Uh, but yeah, that was good. Mistakes okay. Mistakes were made. I mean, I would. That would be the first game I'd get, right? Because yeah, it's the only game to get if you have uh, a Switch. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Like, if you don't have Zelda Breath of the Wild on the Switch, then you have a problem. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you doing with life? Exactly. Right? You might as well end it. It's like you have to rethink your whole life because you have problems. <laughs> you have, you know, you're, you're unstable mentally, and like, no, no, need to change that. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Cool. So, are you loving what you're doing? I mean, what what's next for you? Are you do you still want to be in the gaming world? Do you want to still be a VC? Like, you know, in that kind of space, still work for an accelerator, marketing. You said you're transitioning to product design. So, like, what is it that you want to do exactly? Hmm. So we're talking about goals, huh? <laughs> I guess yeah. I guess it's a good segue, right? Uh, to like. Yeah, career-wise, what 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 is it for you? The ultimate career goal would be definitely still stay in gaming. I mean, it's it's before gaming when I grew up. If you were a gamer, you were a nerd, you were a loser, and what the fuck are you doing spending so much time and money on World of Warcraft? So definitely, I want to stay in this. Uh, industry because it's changing so fast like right now 
Esports, baby. Esports. <laughs> Dude, a 16-year-old kid won $3 million. What game was that on, though? Fortnite. Yeah, that's it. That's right. That's Booga. crazy. I watched it live, and I saw, and I watched Booga win, winning $3 million. I mean, he's got a stupid-ass name. Booga. I like Booga. What does it mean? <laughs> Actually, his grandpa gave it to him. Oh, okay, fine. It's not <laughs> so that stupid. You've been God damn it! Asshole. God damn it! I mean, <laughs> shit. How am I supposed to know that? <laughs> okay, now you can try to save yourself. <laughs> uh, it's not worth it at this point. Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't think it's worth it. And then Dota 2. What is that? Like 35, 34 millions, and it was all not all, I guess, but if not all, majority was crowdfunded. Basically, you know, they buy item in the game and then all of that money goes to the prize pool for the tournament. And it's there's so much money. It's even making more money than the music and vi movie industry together. Yeah, but you don't want to be a professional gamer. That's not what you want to do, right? Because these guys put in the work. Like, you have to be... You have to, like, take steroids in order to suppress the buttons faster. I mean, I blame, <laughs> I blame my mother for that. You know, I could have been playing games my whole the whole day and not go to school and now we'll be making millions but no <laughs> i had to go and you know study and i had to go and do some like extracurricular activities but <laughs> <laughs> look at where it took me so i mean like there eventually would be that right at school i mean there is already like you know i mean oh, there's yeah there's esports teams uh i guess it's becoming like uh you get, uh, how do you call it, the scholarships for athletes, and now there are scholarships for esports athletes. Yeah, it's getting there are schools where they basically teach you how to become a game developer. They're, yeah, they're, it's I wanted to do game animation, so like when I game animation. yeah when I when I fucked up on computing, I was like deciding what degree to do next because I really hated like working. So I was like working for a year out of that first year I failed. I was like. Okay, what do I do? So I either do like an art foundation, game animation, or business. And I chose business because that was the quickest one to get a degree. And by that point, I was sick of like working and I was like, I can't do this 24-7, like, you know, 14 hour days in a restaurant. That was not the life. Mm. So I was like, okay, I better study, get this degree, and then move on. So, but yeah, I never I never got into it, uh, but it would be great. Mm -hmm. G gaming is uh, is awesome. Yeah. That's why I, want. I mean the end goal would be becoming a product manager for something related to the gaming industry. It can be anything from you know working for Discord, working for uh, Steam, where because I don't want to make games. Making games, it's hard. It's uh, it's it's just not something that interests me in the end. I've been in that scene. Uh, I work for an um, indie mobile game uh, studio. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, no, I don't think I want to make games. Do you want to be like the hot girl on IGN that tells you about the weekly updates? Oh, yes, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hot enough, though. <laughs> no, right, right, right. Shit. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. Can what? we take yeah. a break? We can. And we're okay. back. <laughs> After Chris had to pee. Because he has a small bladder and he didn't pee before the podcast. No, basically I had a hot pot today that was like, I just drunk so much fucking soup. You Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I've been consuming lots of liquid, which is good. Oh, yeah. You know, always hydrate. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, what was your first interaction with technology that you can remember? The first time that you're like, yeah, technology. Uh, so my dad was actually my dad wanted to be a computer programmer when he first came to England. He was also sure. yeah. So we I got a com like a personal computer like a PC when I was really young, but it was his, hmm. and he'd always like fuck around on it. But hmm. you know, uh, being a, uh, an immigrant is not you can't you know uh, you can't basically not do anything and study for years, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so he already had it as a toy as a as a hobby. That was probably. You know, watching him, like, play stuff or just do stuff on the computer, that was that was my first thing. I, but I also do remember that he was more excited for all the consoles released than I was. <laughs> so we would go around to my cousin. So we had the SNES, 
uh-huh. right? But we never had the Sega Mega Drive, but my cousin did. So he would even buy the Sega Mega Drive games, so when we go to our cousin's house, he could play it with the kids. Oh. But he got us... I mean, one time when the, the, like, you know, the really good cons- consoles came out, it was like PS1, Xbox, and Dreamcast, right? Mm-hmm. We got all three of them. Because I think they all got released around the same year, mm-hmm. right? And yeah, we were like, we we got all of them. He played on all of them. It was amazing. He would he would be more into Halo than me, and like he oh, would wow. be like he'll kick my ass in like Tekken and stuff. But he was like this big kid that yeah that that I loved. But yeah, like I had always loved technology. Always always been around it and always loved mm-hmm. it. Yeah. That's so cool. It's yeah. kind of similar to my story, I guess. It also comes from my dad. Uh, my dad is the biggest nerd I ever met in my life. Awesome. Like since I can remember, the first thing that he does when he comes back from work is go downstairs to the basement, turn on his computer, and start playing video game. Literally, <laughs> that, that's, that's awesome. all he does. And uh, for like one of the Christmases, I bought him the complete collection of Star Wars movies, and, like you know, like Blu-ray. No, it wasn't a Blu-ray. It was like a long time ago. It was just a D- normal DVD. It was <laughs> the complete DVDs, yeah. version with like extended cutscene and whatever. Oh yeah. And I was, like, oh he was yeah. So happy. I'm like, oh no, no, no. That was cool. <laughs> I remember. Do you remember uh, laser discs? I do. I do. Yeah, I remember that. I, I think my my uh, uncle is also a nerd with movies. So mm. we had like the laser disc, you know, like the VCD players and the DVD players. But yeah, that that was when also I saw like other geeks around me. I was like, mm. oh, cool. Like even now he has he he converted his garage into a cinema. So he's got like this sick ass projector, Lazy Boys, and like. Even carpeted the walls, but he's got like all these different like machines for like sound and for picture quality and shit. It's really cool, like absolute geek, but loved it, loved it. That's like my dream to have a cinema in my house. That's the ultimate Net- dream. Netflix, baby, you've got it, you've got it. We all <laughs> yeah. have it. No, it's not the same. It's not the same. Like I want a Dolby surround, like sound system. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like all that shit, you know. Uh huh. But uh. Yeah, my dad always been the nerd in the house, and I remember that I would just sit there and literally watch him play video games. Do you remember ones that you watched him play, or like ones that you in your memory? Yeah, so there was the 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 first like not the first, but the first prequel movie of Star Wars came out. Yeah. And they have the pod racing in the movie that has been like super criticized, but like as a kid, I was like, this is fucking cool. And uh, he had a racing game with that, and I would spend like so much time watching him playing that. It was like crazy. Uh, another game was World of Warcraft. So at that time, he I played think, it. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it was. I think he played since the first version, like what now it's classic. Wow. And I joined when I was about nine years old. I think. I think it's because he got so annoyed that I was always like watching him and sitting down and be like, eh, why are you killing monsters? <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh, that dog is cute. Why are you killing it? <laughs> and uh, he built me my first custom PC. I don't know. He built me a custom PC before because I think my first interaction with technology was when I was four, three to five years old. And my mom likes to tell this story. She was, you know, my dad was at work, uh, but I had some like Barbie educational games on his computer. And one time he was at work and she was, you know, cleaning the house, doing whatever. And then she realized, huh, my daughter just disappeared. Where is she? (laughs) And apparently I just went to the basement, turned on the computer and started like playing Barbie video games by myself. Awesome. Yeah. So that was my first interaction. And then, you know, I started watching my dad. And then he built me a PC when I was maybe seven years old. And then, like, a couple of years later, he installed World of Warcraft. And we would play together. And I was, like, <laughs> a orc warrior. <laughs> like, oh, no, does he still play? Uh, he does still play video game. His favorite game now is Fallout 76. Really? He spent, like, 300 hours on it. Jeez, is he retired? No. <laughs> okay. Like I was he, like, what? That he still comes back from work and still goes to the basement and still plays video games. First thing that he does. Damn, your mama's hate his guts. 
<laughs> I mean, she's watching movies like on Thai like, dramas. Yeah, Thai <laughs> dramas on her iPad. Oh her, shit! Yeah, that's it, right? They're Mom's they're with the dramas, dad with the games. That's yeah. exactly <laughs> like my like. Whoa, that's that's eerily crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess now the generation would be a little bit different. Like, I'm pretty sure that the guy that I will be with. Or if I have a kid, I'm gonna be the nerd person for that kid. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna introduce you to the good things in life. <laughs> Don't you think like eventually like both parents would be doing this shit? Like into like anything like everything we do now pretty much gets performed in technology, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like probably. I mean, both parents are nerdy. Yeah. You see kids with like iPads and everything, and at that time, for me, having a custom built PC was something like a seven years old with like a custom built PC. It was like, ah, what is this? Yeah, like, what is oh, this? Yeah. Like, how did you how did you even do it? Yeah, but now everyone has like iPads and iPhones, and it's as powerful, if not more powerful, than my yeah. <laughs> custom PC at seven. Yeah, years it's old. just not as cool because custom ones like you see all these like lights and this like water filtration or like cooling Dude, system. It's fucking mad. My PC was silver and red, and it had blue lightning. I'm so jealous. So fucking so jealous, cool. man. So cool. Yeah, now everything has changed so much. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, there's gonna be way more girls into tech, uh, even more tech savvy than other guys. Uh, but you know, the, although now everyone is a little bit more tech savvy, there's always like different levels of how tech savvy you can be. Yes. Yes. So I'm gonna be the freaking nerd in the couple. I demand it. <laughs> Funny thing is, I work in tech. Right? I mean, we both do, but I don't think I'm that tech savvy. To be fair. I don't think I, I... I don't know. Do you know what's a RAM? Yeah, fuck. <laughs> come on, mate. Wait, 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 wait. I've bought a fucking computer in the last year. What? Like, like, don't test me what, on this. What, what does RAM mean? I don't know what it means. <laughs> don't know what it means. See, this is what I mean. Like, But like, okay, but like, we don't work in hardware, right? Mm -hmm. So we work in software. Mm -hmm. But I still feel like I don't know... I know enough to get by and maybe to talk to someone about it, but I'm not like super literate. Do you know what I'm saying? With all these like new technologies coming, like explain to me what blockchain is and how it works and the systems that you can build from it, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I, I couldn't do that, right? Or like the difference between Python and Ruby on Rails. Hmm. Like what? Like you know, because now we're getting so much more literate where people are like PhDs with this shit, right? Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, when when we think about our target audience or market, like let's say we're building a product and we say, okay, let's gear this product to like tech savvy people. It's so different. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? What level of literacy do you want? Yeah, exactly, because it could be zero to a hundred, and, mm -hmm. and then but like everybody is consumer tech savvy mm -hmm. or social media product yeah. tech savvy. People Definitely. know sort of how to work Facebook, but there might be a like a setting that they don't. I've never thought about, right? Yeah. Like, my mum uses Facebook, but they, she doesn't know how to, like, change her privacy settings, right? Dude, teaching my mom how to save a file was the most gruesome <laughs> process ever in my life. I just I just gave up, and I thought, you know, ask my brother. I'm like, ask, ask your other, ask your son, because I'm like, no, <laughs> my patience ran out. <laughs> Damn. So I went to Vietnam on the weekend, and my mom was moving house, so I was helping her move. And uh, we were supposed to get the guy, like the internet guy, to come on Saturday. Mm -hmm. He didn't make it. Like the company didn't make it because they were so busy. Even bought a new TV. So I was like, okay, let me try and set up all the internet and everything. And like now, from your iPad, you can cast it to the TV, or you can go in your room, use the Apple TV, and cast it to that TV. Mm -hmm. She could be like 24 hours watching her shitty dramas, right? Mm -hmm. and she was like, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> Next day came, the guy with the internet came, you know, new modem or whatever. And so, like, everything was disconnected. Mm -hmm. And then that guy helped her connect some things to Wi-Fi. But then she was like, oh, it doesn't work anymore. Just connect the internet. She's like, how do I do it? She couldn't really troubleshoot, right, on yeah, the phone yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. So she was just like, it doesn't work. Tell me why. She's like, I don't know. And I'm like, what the... So my friend had to actually drive, like, half an hour to her house. Wow. Literally just log into the Wi-Fi. Everything worked. I'm like, she couldn't even tell me that the thing wasn't connected. <laughs> what the fuck? 
<laughs> that's how like she's she could work an iPad bait like on YouTube, mm-hmm. but she doesn't know how to connect to Wi Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. what? How do you even know that as a lit like on the literacy they scale? Just, yeah, 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 they just don't get it. <laughs> it it is weird. I mean, can you imagine like when we are fifty to sixty years old? Oh my god, I'm scared. I don't want to be the old person who has to call like whatever younger person and be like, oh, help that would me. Suck. I don't want that. I don't want that. That would suck, <laughs> man. That, that, yeah, that would be like the scariest thing. <laughs> yeah, because I don't it's know moving how to so... operate the computer anymore. <laughs> yeah, because it's moving so fast, right? Like, how do we, how do we even stay on top of it? I'm sure me and you are outdated already. With like all these new technologies and the applications. And Dude, do you even use TikTok? <laughs> fuck TikTok, man. <laughs> I feel old by not using TikTok. Oh fuck! No, I'm I'm trying to be like that that person that's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna like not use digital things too much. Like I have mm. eight, like I follow eight people on Instagram. That's it. Eight people. Yeah, like I basically made, like when I was doing this digital detox, I was like, okay, mm. delete Facebook off my phone, yeah. delete all this shit, and then like I, I was like, okay, no, I want to use Instagram as a, as a messenger app, right? Mm-hmm. So then I started unfollowing everybody, mm-hmm. and only since I moved to Thailand, I added eight back. Mm-hmm. Nothing is ever on my feed, basically, there's some stories, but I don't get like locked into this world of like endless story watching. So like mm-hmm. TikTok would be the same thing, right? I would start following people, yeah. and then I will just use it for like four hours a day. Fuck that. Yeah, but the thing is that I, I, I mean, I am a pretty heavy. Ah, uh, no, not that heavy anymore. Uh, right now I really just like look at my Twitter and Instagram, and then I stop basically uh using anything else. Anything. Um, the thing is that I'm like, you know, TikTok now is the thing of the young people, and I like to feel young. <laughs> so you had Snapchat back back in the day, right? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? I'm, I, I'm never gonna use this, and I uninstall it like a couple of months later. And now I downloaded TikTok, you know, I started following a couple of people, and I'm like, no, no, I I don't get it. I, I'm too old for this shit. Well, okay, well, what what's the why why TikTok and why not Instagram? I I heard the the editing tools and the creator tools are better, but is it is it not the same format? What is it like? Why is it different? No, so basically TikTok is just like an endless stream of Instagram stories. Okay, got it. But it's all based on memes. So memes or people dancing or like e-boys and e-girls like, you know, doing sexy dances and be like, yes. I don't even know what e-boys and e-girls are. What (laughs) is going on? You don't know what an e-girl or an e-boy is. No, man. I just learned the term ABG like um, a year ago. Really? Yeah, so I'm not... I don't know what's up. How do I explain that without being insulting? (laughs) Please. Uh, okay um it's boys or girls or any other gender (laughs) basically being hot and that's it why do you need a term for it and people consume it like crazy why do you need a term for it i don't know okay this is what i'm confused about so esports Electronic mm. sports, sports you play online. Mm. An e boy and an e girl for me is someone that's online or like. Well, do you know what I mean? Like what? It's literally just like hoes and whatever else. <laughs> hoes and studs. No, I don't. Hoes and studs. There's a, there's a term in Vietnam they use uh, when I when I moved there and it's hot boy and hot girl. It's basically <laughs> it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like oh look at this hot boy, but he's just so stupid. I hate that term. Yeah, I, I don't term. get it. I mean, I understand the concept of eye candy and, you know, but at the same time, what are they doing? They're literally just, you know, like, biting their lips and be like, you know, doing nothing. <laughs> and I would get the meme part. I mean, memes are cool and they're funny, but, oh, no, I, I don't get TikTok. I, I think I'm too old for that. Okay. And accepting that was the hardest thing <laughs> Shit, of my life. Man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like realizing, oh, my God, I'm old. Well, the trend is now to even just not have that right like have you heard of the distractionless iphone yeah, 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 yeah people are like consciously removing themselves from the digital world because they realize that it's this whole world of comparing that like we're talking about like with like mums like comparing oh, their yeah. kids right like so like asian w- moms love social media <laughs> yeah so like now we are the asian mums because we're comparing ourselves to all these e-boys and fucking e-girls or whatever it is right people have been trying to get off that 
I wonder if we even need to know about these new things. Maybe because we're in the industry, but other than that, we don't really need it. Yeah, we don't. But I feel like I still like to understand it. Yeah. I still like to keep up to date and see like why. I mean, these Generation Z, they are, they will become our new customers one day. So why not try to understand them? now because now they're becoming you know consumers and one day they will start to earn money and you know start to like spend also you're right yeah 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 if we're building products for these guys we probably need to understand what yeah. what they deem like a need or a value oh that's interesting okay, okay. see see you have to keep up to date because one day you will try to extrapolate money from them <laughs> <laughs> and you that's have to my only reason what do they care about oh they care about like e-boys and e-girls <laughs> Or okay. maybe I'll just sell adult diapers. How do you know? Well, <laughs> I mean, there's a market for that. There's a huge market. There's a huge market for that. So yeah, especially yeah. in Japan. Really? The, yeah, why, why it, in Japan? It outsells uh, baby diapers because basically after the war in Japan when they were rebuilding their economy, they mm. basically invented a bunch of jobs. So people were like, you know, in the workforce and mm. employment was, you know, unemployment was like record low or whatever right so now there's like remnants of that or it's inherited that through you know the decades and you literally have people standing by like roadworks and just to point left and right so it's like literally you employ a guy to stand there for 12 hours a day they're so proud of that job or or they feel bad about stepping away from it mm. they just wear diapers Aww. so they just go to the toilet and they but like they're like kind of old older people right um, you know, maybe like 40 or 50 years old, or even more. There's lots of these jobs that are like, what the fuck? And it's uh, supposedly really, really popular in Japan, and with that wow. aging population as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a 100%. lot of those number of jobs that people just kind of. I mean, I would love to wear, like, imagine not going to the toilet. <laughs> just wear an adult diaper. I mean, it would be so oh. chilled. Maybe I'm just like, I'm going to try it one day. <laughs> you should go buy one and be like, is this a good user experience? <laughs> Not going to the toilet. I mean, yeah. Well, for me, I'll, going to the toilet is a good thing. Because, you know, it forces you to stand up, get away from your computer. So I like bathroom breaks. I like it. I, I grew up as a bartender. Okay. Uh, I mean, I didn't grow up as a bartender, but I work as a bartender. And everyone else had smoking breaks. But I didn't because I never smoked cigarettes like regularly and i was like god damn it my only break basically it's going to the bathroom because i don't have cigarette break so i have to go to the bathroom so <laughs> just like sit down and be like now i'm gonna enjoy my like 10 minutes of bathroom <laughs> yeah it's, it's weird like when you think about these companies and like everybody's working on computers but they block certain websites i think that's fucked up right like because oh, yeah, 100%. Because, because okay yeah exactly for, to your point of you can Go out for a cigarette break for like 15 minutes, but you can't go on YouTube for 15 minutes or go on Facebook or whatever, right? Yeah. It's like the modern day smoke break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, It's so fucked up and I, I don't get that. Um, I hope your company doesn't do that. No, 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 they good, don't good. do that. Also, we have our own personal computers and the, the network is from like, so my office is in WeWork, so... I mean, I, they can't do that. Yeah, 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 blocking, blocking you going on those sites, yeah. Yeah, no. But, I mean... I don't care if someone is watching YouTube as long as they're doing their job. Maybe yeah. it takes them 10 minutes to do their job and then they're done. I'm like, okay, well. Yeah, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Like, do whatever. You, you're getting paid to, you know, watch YouTube, but you did your job. So in the end, is it really important? Yeah, I agreed. Th I think it was, uh, there is a car company where the more their employees work, the less pay they got actually it was that's a, cool it was a car <laughs> company uh i started it, it was a case study that i had in university i don't remember which one was it but basically it forced people to work you know faster and more efficiently and the less work they did then you know they could retain more pay that's and if so they crazy. had to work longer hours they'd be like yeah no now you, you know. fucked up <laughs> yeah you fucked up now you're gonna pay less like, we're going to pay you less and i'm like wow that's very very cool i uh, so there's this guy called jason freed he's basically run this company called basecamp for the last 20 years 
he has that kind of similar methodology where he thinks the most important thing about as a manager and as a leader you have to protect your employees time right mm. so when he think about when he thinks about 40 hour work week okay well uh, eight hours a day five days a week right but really giving them back their time by having zero meetings they document everything oh, so yeah, if yeah, you yeah. need to read about it it's you know Basecamp is this project management software mm. that they literally so they they have this habit of like not calling meetings if it's a meeting it'll only be two or three people because that's usually where the decision's made anyway. Mm -hmm. And for, what, five months a year from May to September or something, they work 32-hour weeks. Wow. Yeah. So, like, you, it really forces you to get your shit done, right? That's uh, nice. It's very cool. And I think, I think that's the future of companies, where, mm -hmm. like, uh, to have a work-life balance is, is really, really important. But also, like, what do you... Like, when you go to the office, right? Like, I fucking hate going to the office sometimes, right? <laughs> I know I have to interact with people. That's not the part that I hate. I hate the distraction. Yeah. So much. Dude, yes. I have one colleague that <laughs> keeps interrupting me all the time. And he, if he is listening to this podcast, yeah, you know who you are. Because I told you in the face that <laughs> you should stop interrupting me. <laughs> Dude, I had a guy like that back in my old last job. And... He would just come up and just, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. But, like, he was a really nice guy, but I I couldn't take him anymore. It was like, when he would talk, I would, I would just keep on looking at my screen. I'd be like, man, let me come talk to you when I've got some time. But he, but he did that for me for, like, three months before I was just like, I just gave him the cold shoulder. Because, oh. like, what the fuck? But, like, yeah, all these meetings, right? It, it, it's it's so annoying like and then like when everyone else goes to lunch you kind of like kind of have to go to lunch too yeah and then that there's these like coffee trips and then like someone will grab you and then you're kind of like out of your mode of thinking it, it's so annoying that's why i personally prefer to work from home when i need to get something done and it's not manual work we're doing anymore mm -hmm. right if you don't have to think about it, it's just kind of like, oh, putting this part here and then, like, you know, pass it to the next part of the line. But mm -hmm. now it's like you really need to think about problems. Jason Fried has this really good uh, way of looking at it. It's kind of like sleep, hmm. where, like, uh, if you get interrupted, right, sometimes we, when, when we sleep, if we get woken up periodically, you wake up and you're like, well, I did the sleep thing, but I don't feel like I've slept eight hours, mm -hmm. right, because you keep on getting interrupted. He thinks work is like that, where you're in different phases of work and thinking about something. Mm -hmm. When someone interrupts you, you have to start that all over again from phase one to whatever the end phase is. Mm -hmm. I like that take on work, and I think that we don't get enough of that. Like, we might work like three hours a day maximum when you're in the office. Do you even get three hours of uninterrupted time? No. Fuck no. <laughs> Nobody does. Like, in the I office now? Nah, man. Yeah. But even keeping focus for three hours, like, nah, no, that's impossible. You're right, you're right, you're right, right. It's just like, you do need, like, some natural breaks. But then, you know, it's different having, like, a break where you're just, like, you know, stopping, looking at your work and be like, okay, I, I am doing something smart rather than, oh, my God, what am I fucking doing here? So, yeah, definitely there's no way you can do it three hours of uninterrupted work. Sure, but I mean, the fact that we don't even get it is weird, right? And that's why, like, all these startups have, like, the quiet corner or, like, mm. a booth, right, where people go and actually try to block the world out. So there's this um, time management technique called, like, Pomodoro, I believe. Oh, yeah, Pomodoro. Yeah, do you know about it? So, yeah, because Pomodoro means uh, tomato in Italian. Yeah, it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. With, uh, the tomato technique. The tomato technique, yeah. Sorry, with, I, I yeah, said yeah. tomato, I mean... Tomato, for all my British people. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Tell us what it is. Um, yeah, so it came because uh, this guy, I am not sure who that was, but he had a kitchen timer in the shape of a tomato, and then he was like, okay, now I'm going to put like 25 minutes of uninterrupted work, and then I'm going to have like 10 minutes break, and then again, 25 minutes, 10 minutes break. Uh, you have like three sessions of, uh, uninterrupted work uh, with break included and then you have a longer break yeah so this is how you like pace yourself during the work 
I think it's super good. I tried it and it doesn't work for me. Okay. For me, the break has to come naturally because sometimes I'm on a task that needs a little bit longer than 25 minutes. So yep. I would rather like stay maybe like 30 minutes or something more. Or sometimes after 10 minutes, just like I can't concentrate. So I just need like a break faster. Okay. So for me that, you know, it's uh, it doesn't work. Okay. I'm just not that kind of person. But the concept was super interesting when I read about it. I was like, cool, I'm going to be super productive. And in the end, I just started ignoring it. Like, yeah, no, it doesn't work for me. Yeah, it's like the it's like your attention span, right? He's, he's yeah. trying to force you to like be razor focused because you know you have a break and you want to kind of finish this box. Yes. But also, maybe it's like a way to break down your tasks. Hmm. If, if a task takes more than 30 minutes, how do you break it down even further so hmm. you focus on what's important? But yeah, it, I don't think it works for everyone. I don't think it works for me either. Hmm. Yeah, because when you're in the mode, sometimes I can go for hours. Yeah. I can be like just locked in. But that's yeah. different. Yeah, it really depends on what I'm doing. Yeah. If, I, if I'm doing some maybe design work, then I will... I mean, I will always listen to something in the background, but then if I have to make like more strategical decisions, then I'm like, yeah, I need no distraction, but maybe I'm going to like tap out and start watching YouTube video because I can't make a decision. So I need to think about something else and like, okay, now I'm going to watch this YouTube video and then I'm going to go back on my task and now I can solve it because I didn't think too much about it. Yeah, I used to have this uh, this Ed Sheeran concert. When he's in, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's in like Dublin, right? Like performing mm. live. But that used to be like for probably half a year, that was my go to song for getting really, really productive work done. Mm. I don't know what it was, but maybe I trained myself to listen to this because like I knew it so well, this concert, like all the songs in it. That, but it kind of also uplifted me. And I was like, every time I put that on, I'm like, focus mode hmm. it was like really weird i don't know what happened yeah. but it was cool it was cool but i can't listen to music while i write yeah no not when you write oh no. i guess it depends like chill lo-fi music then it's okay but okay. if it's if post malone comes up and i'm like no i'm gonna have to like fall like, you know, <laughs> I'm and raise my hand spark up air, a spliff like, no. <laughs> all right yeah. do we have any other things you want to talk about I mean, I think we can start wrapping it up. How about we do the the fire round of questions? How can we do that? I don't know. Let's riff off things that you wanted to ask me, and then I can ask you questions. Okay, we can do one question each. Like, let's say four questions each. So I'm going to go first, and then you go. And we have to reply in, like, one sentence. Fuck. Just oh one God. sentence. I, I literally don't have any questions, but... Fuck it, I'll just make him up on the spot. No, uh, right. we're just going to think, like, random stuff. Okay. About, you know, since this uh, p this episode is about ourselves, let's, you know, think about something random, like... Okay. Okay, okay. okay. I'm going to start. Okay. What's your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> uh, po uh, Pikachu. Fuck, that was boring. Wow, yeah, so vanilla. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had Pokemon Yellow when I was growing up. Okay. So everybody had that, <laughs> and I went to Vietnam, and I bought Pokemon Yellow, because... Europe only had red and blue, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh, so fucking cool, man! <laughs> Got Pokemon Yellow, bitches!" <laughs> That's why Pikachu is my favorite. Um, okay. Do you have any idea of how you're gonna die? If Ooh. you were to guess, idea of how I will die? No, but I know how I want to die, which is gonna be in my bed peacefully. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, oh, you, you thought my answer was boring. Okay, no, okay. That's the best death you can get. <laughs> fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> or, or dying like from orgasm, but I don't want that death. <laughs> dying from orgasm? <laughs> but I, I don't Tell me about that. that. Tell me about no, how no, no, you're going to no, die from orgasm. That's for the episode about sexuality. That, that, <laughs> oh, we, that, that we're going to have now because we talked about it. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool, cool. Good topic, mate. Good fucking topic. All right. <laughs> Ask me a question. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, my God. Favorite music when you were 15 years old? Uh, Hip-hop. And, and I think it still is. Maybe it's more chill out now, but yeah, it was hip-hop. It was, fuck, or like artists like uh, Tupac. It was a lot of UK hip-hop. I think that's where it really caught up to me because a lot of my friends were like uh, in the music scene. So, yeah, lots of UK stuff. Loki, Dot Brown, obviously... 
shout out to Flip Tricks and the High Focus crew. Uh, yeah, that was, yeah. I think uh, my first real music love that I've mm. kept. Cool. How much money do you need to make in your lifetime in order for you to be happy? Ten million. Fuck it, <laughs> hell. That's nothing. We took no. ten million baht. Ten million baht. No, no, ten million USD. Uh, and ten million yen. <laughs> right. I actually didn't thought this myself, but my, I was discussing this with my friend, and he was like, you know, at ten million, it's the threshold when money makes itself. So I'm like, okay, I want to get to ten million too. <laughs> ten million. Is that like cash? Or like in the bank like or assets. Ten million in assets. Okay, so you've got like a couple of houses yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. More than a couple of houses, maybe. Okay. Uh. Hmm. Oh my god, I have no idea what to ask. Uh. Let's see. <laughs> oh sh- Oh, what? That's like super evil giggle. What, what's the What's the first thing you do in the morning? Except opening your eyes. Switch off my alarm. No. Um. The f- Oh, it's really bad, but I check my phone. Uh, I'm not supposed to, but immediately I answer messages. Mm-hmm. So I always wake up to like some sort of messages, mm-hmm. either online or WhatsApp. Or I don't do the email thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to, uh, mm-hmm. but I think it's just like working for companies with different offices globally. It has trained me to wake up and check things like Slack, mm-hmm. where you're like, oh, someone in the other part of the world kind of needs an answer or they're talking to you so i do that now but the funny thing is the company i work for now is based locally so there's none of that but they're still like friends from i don't know i just answer messages uh, yeah. it's fucking shit bad habit i know 2020 it's time to change that yeah maybe maybe bro okay what's one habit you want to pick up this year in 2020 What's one habit you want to adopt? A habit that I want to adopt. <laughs> Funny, because... Heroin! It's kind of, it's kind of this, Yeah, <laughs> methamphetamine. MDMA. <laughs> Molly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, K. Special K. Ketamine. It's funny because I guess it relates to, you know, what you do in the morning. And it's, I want to go to sleep without looking at my phone. How long? Like 30 minutes, one hour. So 30 minutes to one hour before I go to bed, I... I don't want to look at my phone. Okay, and why? I mean, I'm so attached to this thing. It's like, it's like the extension of my arm, and it's not. I want to get detached by it. So in the end, the goal, I mean, the habit would be like detaching myself from the phone and try to be like, you know, a little bit dependent on it, a little bit less dependent on it. Yeah, I think everybody's got to work to that, but I like it that it's something that you want to do this year. Yeah, I try. I started working on it uh, end of 2019, mostly in the morning. So in the morning, I would say that I am doing okay-ish. Right how, now, how long before you check it? Half an hour? Like After 20 the shower? Minutes, okay, I 15, think that's good. 15, minutes. Depends on the day. Okay, okay. But you do it every day? Um, During the week, during the weekend, I am a little bit worse. Because I'm like, I turn on my, um, I mean, I turn on the, 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 blah, 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 <laughs> the that makes sense. Yeah. and I start watching like YouTube videos and Netflix, because, you know, I'm staying in bed. Right, so right, I'm right. So I'm just chilling while during the week I'm trying to do like some 10 minutes of yoga or stretches, and then I'm like, okay, now I get ready, and now, now I can start to look at my phone. Okay, that's quite nice. Yeah. Stretches in the morning. All right, uh, last question. Cool. <sighs> Last question. I want something deep, but not too deep. <laughs> what What do you want to accomplish by 2021? What do I want to accomplish by 2021? Uh, that's a good question. Probably own an asset that... Uh, increases its value incrementally over time. So I've been thinking about buying a house. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely can't afford one. Mm-hmm. And I definitely don't know if I'm ready because, like, I see all my friends around me doing it, and it's like, you know, it's one of those things, right? Like, uh, graduate, uh, get a good job, then buy a house, right? Mm-hmm. But I think it also makes sense, maybe, as 
because right now my money's in the bank and it's not doing much. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, how, how, like, you need to get on the property ladder, property ladder, right? Like the way to build wealth, that is definitely one of those things. Uh, albeit, it's a secure way, and other people are like, you should invest in something more risky when you're younger and stuff. But yeah, own, own something that earns me passive income. Mm-hmm. right because you're not doing anything it's just yeah. kind of incrementally growing mm-hmm. i want to do that yeah but i don't know how what that is right now but a house is the easy way out i, I think yeah. okay but yeah yeah get a fucking mortgage Whoa. i don't i don't want to i don't want to mortgage Ugh. yeah no way um okay my question if you could create some sort of art what would it be like an artistic expression of yourself. Like what which would medium? that be? Sure. Also, yeah, which medium and also what the hell would it be? I want to do like manga illustrations. <laughs> I will be a manga illustrator. I will be represented by a manga illustration. Yes, yes, that, that's my final answer. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you I, sure? Are you sure? I, I, I am not sure how to put it down, but something related to like manga and illustration. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, tell me why. Well, I grew up watching anime and manga and I just love it. And the media that I consume the most, like, artistically, I would say is, like, illustrations and, you know, manga illustration as well. Uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, no, I guess that's that's what draws me the most into, like, art. Like, that was the reason why I went to, like, an artistic high school. I wanted to be a manga artist. Oh, man, I wanted to be a cartoonist when I was younger. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, Love I guess fucking cartoons. Artistic, man. creative kids. Like, their first dream is, like, I want to create cartoons. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> I saw my dad, like, my dad was, like, drawing fucking Batman. Batman. Yeah, when it, when I was younger, I was like, how oh, you're so good. <laughs> I want to do this. Like, <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah. Very cool. All right, let's uh, wrap this up. Where can we find you? online jessica well you can find me on instagram and twitter under stormtroopy s-t-o-r-m storm t-r-o-o-p-i-e stormtroopy okay yeah, storm yeah. Troopy. Ooh, that was hard yeah uh you can find me at semi grown kid pretty much everywhere yeah that's it we'll see Bye. you later Bye. peace like extra content <laughs> yeah 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 behind the scene like if you donate to our patreon then you're gonna get <laughs> yeah us <laughs> just shitty, not shitty giving value of yeah. our introduction to our first episode of our ranting bananas podcast <laughs> exactly no i was thinking uh Sorry, crumb mother Sorry, crumb.